Base launch check and countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Good evening, everyone. My name is Atticus Badera, and I'll be your host for today's Starlink mission. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 49th launch of the year and 248th overall mission to date. On your screen is a live view Thanks of our Falcon 9 rocket drop back, retract. at Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. At T minus 4 minutes and 46 seconds, the range is green and ready to support. Weather is currently a watch item, but is trending in a positive direction, and so we are proceeding towards a T0 of 8.50 p.m. Eastern Time. The teams are tracking no issues with the vehicle or with the spacecraft. Strongback retract has started. And as you just heard over the nets, the strongback retract has begun. You should see the strongback clamp arms opening up just below the fairing halves. And there you can see the arms have begun to open. And after they open fully, you will see the strongback move away from the rocket. The strongback, also referred to as the TE or transport erector, is the large structure that you see next to the Falcon 9. We use the TE to transport propellant as well as electrical connections to the vehicle while we're on the pad. You might notice those white clouds on your screen. Those are formed from the cold gases above the LOX tank venting out of the vehicle to maintain pressure. And when the cold gas contacts the moist Florida air, it forms the clouds you see on your screen. Coming up next at T minus three minutes, we should hear a call out for stage one LOX load completion. Stage one locks load complete. There we go, at T minus three minutes and two seconds, the Falcon 9 first stage is now fully loaded with RP1 and locks. Now we're just awaiting the completion of locks loading on the second stage, that should be wrapping up in around 50 seconds. The teams began loading propellant on the vehicle at about T minus 35 minutes. And this process finishes with LOX load completion on the second stage, wrapping up at around T minus two minutes. Stage two, lock load complete. And with that call out, Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with one million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. The booster or first stage of the rocket supporting tonight's mission is flying for the sixth time today, having previously supported CRS-26, OneWeb Launch 16, Intelsat IS-40E, and two Starlink missions. After liftoff and stage separation, this booster is scheduled to land a few minutes later on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Coming up next, we should hear a call out over the nets updating us that Falcon 9 is in startup, and this means that the flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Ground gas close up. Vehicle is in startup. 
We just heard that call out that Falcon 9 is now in startup. In a few seconds, we should hear our launch director, or LD, give the final go for launch. LD, go for launch. And as you just heard, the launch director has given the final go seconds. to proceed for launch. So let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 22 Starlink satellites into space. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, engine full power, and lift off the starting. Go Falcon, go Starling. Plus 30 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 from Cape Canaveral, Florida at 8.50 p.m. Eastern Time. The next major milestone coming up is Max-Q. This is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of external stress Power telemetry nominal. as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. And there you just heard that call out for Max Q, which again is when the rocket experiences the largest amount of external stress. Now we're just about one minute away from a series of events. Those are MECO, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, SES-1, or second engine start one, and then following that is fairing separation. MECO, or main engine cutoff, is when all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage will shut down. Start of impact chill. Stage separation is when the first and second stages physically separate. And SES-1, or second engine start one, is where we light the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. And fairing separation is when the two fairing halves will separate away from the second stage. So let's keep an eye out for those events happening in quick succession. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition and good chamber pressure. And as you just saw and heard over the nets, we did just have successful MECO, stage separation, and second engine start one. Coming up on fairing separation from the second stage in just a few seconds. Fairing separation confirmed. And there go those two fairing halves. We will be attempting to recover both of them today using our recovery vessel, Bob. Both of the fairing halves that are supporting today's mission are flight proven. One half is flying for its seventh time today and the other is flying for its eighth time. Stage one, which you see on the left side of your screen, is currently heading back down towards Earth, where our drone ship, just read the instructions, is waiting in the Atlantic Ocean. The MVAC engine attached to the second stage is continuing its burn. And this burn should last another two and a half minutes or so.
Designed and manufactured by SpaceX, Starlink is the world's largest satellite internet constellation. Starlink satellites operate in a low Earth orbit, which enables the delivery of high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations all around the globe. Getting some great views of the sunset here from about 145 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. The satellites flying on today's mission are our second generation satellites. V2 is following a nominal trajectory. These satellites are also called the V2 minis. They include a more advanced phased array antenna, as well as the use of E-band for backhaul. And this enables Starlink to provide about four times more capacity per satellite than earlier iterations. This means that with these V2 mini satellites, we will ultimately be able to provide more bandwidth with increased reliability to connect millions of people around the world with high-speed internet. Coming up next in the mission in about 30 seconds is the entry burn on the first stage. And that's the first of two burns it will go through in preparation for landing. As you can see on the right side of your screen, the MVAC engine is continuing to accelerate the second stage and the Starlink satellites into a low Earth orbit. We're now traveling over 14,000 kilometers per hour. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that call out for stage one entry burn. Stage one is now ignited engines one, five, and nine, and this is to slow it down for atmospheric re-entry. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And there's that call out for entry burn stage shutdown two, FTS on safe. the first stage. The orange glow you see coming from the MVAC nozzle is one of the methods we use to keep the engine cool during burn. The nozzle converts oh, thermal energy. Nominal trajectories. The nozzle can convert thermal energy into light energy. Stage one transonic. There's that call out that the first stage is transonic, which is the transitional period where the vehicle is no longer traveling the speed of sound. Coming up next in around 10 seconds should be the landing burn on the first stage. Stage one landing burn. There's confirmation of stage one landing burn. Terminal guidance. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it, folks. This Falcon 9 first stage has now successfully launched and landed for the sixth time. Should be coming up on second engine cutoff in just a few seconds here. Seco. Nominal orbit insertion. 
And there's that call out we were waiting for, second engine cutoff one, as well as the confirmation of a good orbit. Today's landing marks our 209th overall landing, 209th overall landing of an orbital class rocket, and that includes Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. So with confirmation of successful first stage landing and a successful second engine cutoff, that will wrap up our coverage for now. Be sure to check our social media for confirmation of Starlink deployment. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time.